first name is Mark. Everybody say hello, Mark. Hello, Mark. No, you got to do much better than that. Hello, Mark. Hello, Mark. That's perfect. Mark is a uh, really special guy, very good friend of mine. He is uh, retiring in April after 32 years as an American Airlines flight attendant. Oh. Well, he not only knows how to throw people off of an airplane, he knows how to throw people off of a boat. <laughs> anyway, which brings up a very serious subject. We do have young children on board. Please, parents, do not let them stand up on a seat. Their uh, center of gravity uh, lessens at that point, and it can fall over. He or she, it, whatever. Uh, in the very unlikely event of somebody do falling over, everybody on this boat has a very serious job, and that is take off the glass jet, point at that person in the water, keep your fingers pointed at that person. Well, I will bring the boat around. Mark will throw them enough life preservers and things to mark their uh, spot. I am a lifeguard and a rescue diver. If necessary, I will hand the helm over to Mark. I will jump in the water and bring the child up out of the water, hand them to the parent, you use the rest of the <laughs> If you're an adult, we'll get you out of the water. We're going to set you up here on the anchor. And the rest of the trip, we're not paying attention. Okay. <laughs> There is a, a very unlikely event of fire, which would happen in the stern or rear of the boat. There are fire extinguishers located back there, and there's one uh, by the helm. There's nothing up here, so don't worry about it. Oh, yes, there is a fire extinguisher right here. It's just not my regular boat, I'm sorry. There is a toilet ahead, a commode, a john, an outhouse, depending on where you live in the country. Right behind me, I hear everything that goes on in there. <laughs> Number one only, please. Uh, number two, not very good today. So, what are we missing? You got the number two part. That was good. Uh, I got that part. Um, who is not from Jacksonville? N-O-T, not from Jacksonville. Oh, good fortune. Everyone, you were welcome. Welcome to our beautiful city. Welcome to our beautiful river. Oh, it's part that I make our living on. It's part that I so like. That's all right. <laughs> okay, never mind. <laughs> All right. Everybody's on board. Y'all ready to go? Yeah. Right. Let's have a good time. My, don't mind my hobbling here. I uh, am getting here. Oh, thank you so much. Merry Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> I went hunting yesterday against my doctor's wishes and I twisted my hips. So Ships down. 
down here, but we can bring smaller ships down here. As we head north toward the outlet of the river, it gets deeper and deeper where they've dredged it, and they can bring full-on tanker ships and all that. We'll be talking about that later because I'll show you guys the port. Anyway, we're heading underneath the Main Street Bridge right now. That's what all the locals call it. It's actually called the Alsop Bridge. It was named after an old mayor. It was built in 1941. Okay, we're gonna have quiz questions getting tougher. How much did it cost to build that bridge in 1941? Three million thousand. No, close half of that. 1.5 million dollars it cost to build that bridge. It's a vertical lift bridge. So what happens is when a sailboat comes along, they lift that whole center section of that bridge up, the sailboat goes underneath it, and then they drop it back down again. Real nice bridge. So we have a bunch of bridges in the area, and we're going to go underneath at least two more of them, so you guys will get to see plenty of bridges today. One cool thing about the main, too, if you guys want to look up, it has it has holes in it, so you can actually see the cars from underneath going across the bridge. Which is kind of a strange thing when you're trying to run over it, there's all these holes in it. There's a bunch of race type cars out front here. downtown Jacksonville. Well, in 1901, the entire city of Jacksonville burned to the ground. What they used to do back in the day was to make mattresses, they used to stuff them with Spanish moss. All that Spanish moss that you guys hear and see hanging from the trees. They'd dry it out and then they'd stuff it into mattresses. It was a really cheap way to make mattresses. The problem was it's ultra flammable when it gets dry like that. So a little bit of it caught on fire, burned down 2,400 buildings altogether. All of downtown was destroyed. And the only way that anybody was rescued was they brought them down to the shore because nobody could go that way at all. The flames were too intense. They brought them down and people came by boat and rescued from the other side of the river and pulled people off. And with 2,400 buildings destroyed, only seven people lost their lives in that fire. So that's pretty good. I live in a, I live in a neighborhood called Springfield, which is about a mile that way, and my whole neighborhood was spared. So we have houses there from 1869, older than that, that, that didn't even have to go through the fire because there's a big creek called Hogan's Creek that runs through the middle of town and Hogan's Creek stopped the fire. So I live in a 1911 house that was built after the fire, but there's a, it's a really cool neighborhood if you guys want to drive around. Tons of Christmas lights out right now if you want to see it. Uh, and I got an Airbnb over there too, so feel free to sign up. <laughs> but anyway, that, that uh, monument over there, that giant silver spike that you guys see coming up off the corner of that dock right there, that's a monument to the fire of 1901 and to all the rescues that happened there. And that spot that I told you about that was only about six feet deep where they used to bring the cows across is that street just, just where just beyond where that monument is called Liberty Street. And that's where that's where they used to bring the cows across. Even the Native Americans used to bring the cows across the river there before Mr. Hart came and founded the city in 1820. Another cool thing about cows and Calvert and Jacksonville is that he actually paid for all the land of downtown by selling 49 cows. He traded 49 cows for 19 acres of land and that's how Jacksonville was established. But before that, the Spanish had it. So we're gonna I'm gonna show you guys a spot too where there was actually a Spanish fort right here on the river. And they were afraid that the English were gonna come up and attack their settlers. So they put a Spanish fort right here on the river. And if you guys know Jacksonville at all, there's Spanish forts all up and down this area, including St. Augustine, which many of you have probably been to visit. Very beautiful place. Talk about city life. Right now they have an amazing display going on every Christmas. But in any case, in any case in St. Augustine, they have a huge fort there. That was their main one. And the walls of the fort are nine feet thick, and they're built out of coquina, which is a mixture of oyster shells and sand. That's how they built the walls of the fort, because the native people used to live almost exclusively on oysters. And they used to make these huge mounds of oyster shells. And so there was just all this abundance of oyster shells all around, and somebody figured out how to make that into a construction material. So all over Jacksonville, too, you'll still see real coquina floors, coquina walls, 
and some folk coquina as well because it's really cool looking. It actually looks like it has bits of shell in it. You guys probably know what it looks like. And it's pretty neat. So we have that. We have um, the this building here on the left, on the, on the port side again, it looks like it's got all those holes in it. That building, they actually had a partial collapse in that building and several people passed away when that thing collapsed. So they've been having a war through their lawyers for years trying to figure out what they were gonna do about that building where they're finally gonna implode it in the beginning of January, so just a couple weeks away. The one with all the holes in it over there. They've been, they've been tearing it apart piece by piece to get it to the point where it's good to get it floated. So the next thing we're gonna see along the way here is you guys notice that, that Maxwell House facility back there. That's right with the big Maxwell House sign on it. That's actually named after a hotel in Nashville by the same name, the Maxwell House Hotel. Very, very nice hotel. Theodore Roosevelt went there in 1908 and they gave him a beautiful lunch and at the end of the lunch he had a cup of coffee with his lunch. And guess what he said when he when he finished that cup of coffee? He said, good to the last drop. So ever since 1908, that's been Maxwell House's motto. This is their only roasting facility that they have left in the United States. They roast about a million pounds of coffee per day and when they're roasting, you can smell the roasted coffee all over the city. Another one of my favorite things about Jacksonville. So at my house, I said it a mile away, I can smell it really strong at my house. It makes me want a cup of coffee in the afternoon, even if it's 4 o'clock. You know? And when you come over the bridges a lot of times too, you can smell it from there. So just a kind of unusual thing about Jacksonville. So we have some really nice condos here. We have a marina. Um, and then we're going to get to all of our sports complexes in just a second. So that Bystar, that brick looking building that says Bystar on the side of it, that's our home to our semi-pro hockey team, semi-pro basketball team. We used to have a semi-pro football team. Some would say we still have a semi-pro football team. <laughs> but no, that's our that's our smaller our smaller venue for pro sports teams. And also there's a lot of conventions and events there. And it's actually the first place that I ever saw Barack Obama speak. So quite inspirational. I saw him way back in 2008, which is some people in a lifetime ago. But anyway, he spoke there. He made one mistake, though. He said, "It's so great to be in Orlando." <laughs> you've been on the, you've been on the Camp Rain Trail too long, you know. But other than that, the speech was amazing. So, so that's our Five Star Arena there. And then just beyond that, if you guys look at that green roof building, that is our semi-pro baseball team, Triple A baseball. And of course, several people know what's the name of our baseball team. Jumbo shrimp. Shrimp. The Jumbo Shrimp. And why are they called the Jumbo Shrimp? I'll tell you why. Because the people of Jacksonville wanted to be called the Jumbo Shrimp. So that's it. <laughs> so I guess people thought that was funny, you know, Jumbo Shrimp and everything. But the cool thing about the Jumbo Shrimp is, and if you guys have a AAA team in your town, you can go there and watch some really good baseball for a good ticket for about 12 bucks a person. You get a hot dog for two bucks, you get a beer for four bucks, and you take the kids and have a whole a whole afternoon for next to nothing. So it's a really great way to spend your time. So just after that, we're going to be passing our, of course, our Jaguars team. Jaguars are out of town, as you know, today. They're playing the Jets, and I don't, does anybody have a score? I don't know where they're at right now. They're losing? Oh, spoiler alert, I can't believe it. So, so what we like to say is that the Jaguars are amazing this year because they've already won twice as many games as they did last year. Because last year they won the first game of the season, and then we all said, okay, they're going to the Super Bowl, that's it, we're done, it's over. <laughs> and then they proceeded to lose 15 games in a row after that. <laughs> in any case, we've won two games, and because we got Trevor Lawrence now, everyone was excited about that. But as you know, we've got some other issues going on right now that we have to deal with. In any case, we have a great quarterback. If we can keep him standing upright and not laying on his back most of the time, I think he'd do an amazing job. So our stadium is kind of, kind of unique as well. If you guys look 
at that giant white rectangle on the end of it, that whole thing is a TV screen. The biggest one in the league. It's 300 feet wide, so the TV screen is as wide as a football field. And there's two of them. There's one on each side. And they're so big that we can sit out here in the boat during game time and watch the game from out here on the water. So pretty nice. Another really cool thing about our stadium is that it actually has two swimming pools inside of it. A lot of people don't know that. I think uh, Tampa Bay has some swimming pools as well. But they're, uh, you can rent them for only $12,500 for three hours. Get about 50 or 60 of your friends together and you can have a nice afternoon. What I like to say about it is they have like a plexiglass or a, an acrylic front on them so you can see the people in the pool. So I like to say if you want millions of people to see you in your bathing suit, that's the way to do it. Go rent one of those things for 12 5 and you're good to go. But it really ends up being a lot of corporate events mostly and people bring their kids and all that. So we have a lot of entertainment venues along here as well. If you guys look at that funny looking roof on that building that's attached to the stadium, on the right side of the stadium there, that's called Daly's Place. It's only been around for about five years and it's a really nice concert venue. Um, I saw the Doobie Brothers there, I saw Steely Dan there, I saw Sting and Shaggy uh, play there. Uh, really great acoustics, great services. If you want a bathroom or a concession or whatever, I mean, they're just everywhere. You're two minutes away from anything you want, so you don't get stuck missing half the show because you're waiting to go to the bathroom or something. So it's a nice facility. There's also a, a natural bowl there where we have other concerts uh, that's right next to that. So a lot of entertainment uh, down here. And then also, uh, our owner of the Jaguar is a guy named Shad Khan. He's a billionaire, obviously, and uh, he's developing the whole waterfront along in front of the stadium. There actually used to be a, a well, that bridge is that green bridge. There used to be a highway that went all the way across in front of the stadium and then ended up connecting up with this highway over here. Well, they took that whole thing out, and that's all going to be apartments, condominiums, restaurants, uh, any kind of any kind of fun recreational thing you can want. I think there's going to be a Ritz Carlton there, a marina, I think he wants a couple soccer fields. Things are notoriously hard to get through past the city of Jacksonville, but Sean Khan, in his way, is figuring out how to grease the wheels. And he also has a big handlebar mustache, if you ever seen it. Interesting looking guy, so when we go to the game, sometimes we all wear handlebar mustaches. Because we're really happy about the fact that he's getting things moving and developing a lot of the city. Because all of this, all of these shipyards have been sitting vacant like this for a really long time. In World War II, they built 50 ships for the war effort. It's right here along these docks. I think it's 52 ships altogether. But in any case, it was a very active shipyard going back, as I said, 150 years. So we want to see all this stuff come back together. We have our own little dock over there. If you guys see that little dock all by itself just beyond that boat right there. And sometimes we park there because our guests like to go to uh, this, this great brewery called the Intuition Ale House. And you guys, if you look right underneath that bridge there, you can actually see the sign for Intuition Ale House. They have good food, they have great beer, and they're probably the largest distributor in Jacksonville. So you guys should check them out when you get a chance. They have one beer called Easy on, on the Eyes, which I really like a lot. But I'll try not to talk about beer because that's my favorite subject. I'll try to keep it to a minimum. In any case, Intuition Ale House right there. So then you see this pile here of sand. That's part of the development that's going on. They're actually making a lot of progress. They have all the street lamps up. The roads are almost done. So they're, they're getting there. And uh, that's our dock there. Uh, it's called the Metropolitan Dock that we're coming up on right now. On the, also on the stern side. You see that white boat over there, that kind of flat looking boat in the front. That's our boat too. We have four boats all together. And we park at Metropolitan Dock. Another really cool thing about the stadium is that if you want to go to a game and you have a boat, you can park there for 72 hours for free. All you got to do is sign up in advance and you can bring your boat down there. So you don't have to pay for parking and you don't have to sit out there in the parking lot for two hours waiting to get out. It only costs you the cost of a boat and you're good to go. You can park there for free, but it's a really, really nice feature that they have. And then also on game day, we run, we run a boat. I don't know if any of you guys have done this before, but for like 20 bucks, 
park over on that shore over by the chart house and they will bring you across and will give you a wristband and your wristband is your return back onto the boat. So it's $20 for a round trip, which is not really a bad deal when you compare that to Ubering and all the hassle that you have to go through. Even to park your car near the stadium can cost $40. So on game day, sometimes we'll move like 1,500 people in a couple hours. We run four boats at the same time. We load them up with 100 people each, and we just run continuously like crazy out here. And then we relax for a little while, and then halftime comes, and the Jaguars are usually losing so bad at that point that people start coming back again. I don't know. <laughs> Most people stay, and then we have a huge rush of people afterwards coming back after the game. A million dollars, a famous boat, which really is not that bad, but there's $350,000 of back dock fees on that boat. So you gotta pay that too. And they actually just moved it. It used to be next to that green ship. So maybe that's promising. Maybe they're gonna do something with it now. We've been hoping that maybe a lot of like school groups have thought about kind of making like a floating school out of it or something like that, but nothing has happened. So it's just, it's already kind of listing to the right. So, uh, so we're kind of worried about it, but maybe they're going to start working on it now. I hope so. But anyway, that's the Atlantis too. Make sure you get a picture of it because it's pretty cool. And then just beyond it, you get a really nice view of the Unity mural too. If you guys want to take a picture of that. Can you ship me an Atlantis? Dynamic yan sa shooting ng Atlant Titanic. Any more questions? Yung mobile na Titanic. Yan ang ginamit Atlantis 2 na boat. Na ship. Ayan. So just beyond the Unity Bureau, the next cool thing is, if you guys look, you see that funny looking thing that has that light blue coloring on it that's floating out there? That's what's called a dry dock, a floating dry dock. There's very, very few of those in the world. And the whole idea of floating dry dock is you could take one of those tugs like those guys have and you can haul that thing anywhere in the world and you can sink it down to the floor of the sea or the river or wherever you are and then you can sail your ship into the middle of it and then you can pump all the water out of it and raise your ship up out of the water and work on it any place in the world because as you know if you go way down into the